praise will always be amazing. Amen. I used to love singing. I call that the male chorus version. Oh, amazing. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to speak to your people. Father, I pray now that you would keep me humble, that you would get the glory. Father God, I'm not here because I'm qualified, but only because you call. Father, keep me mindful of that fact and hide me behind the cross of Jesus. Let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen. 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 Give it an honor. Give an honor first and foremost to God, our Heavenly Father, to my brother in the ministry, Reverend Marshall. Bless you, Pastor. Marshall, to my, my wife, to the Thompsons in their absence, to all of our deacons, trustees, their wives, to this five male chorus, and Sister Jesse, yeah. to all of you here in the sanctuary, online now or later, outside. To you back in the kitchen doing hard work. Thank God for you. Thank God for our ushers. Don't want to be before you long this morning, just long enough, but we're in a series that is greatly needed for the child of God. Reversing the identity crisis. Reversing the identity crisis. I want to invite you to join me in the book of Matthew. Very familiar text to those who've been around the church for a day or two. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 18. Matthew 16, verses 13 through 18. Matthew 16, verse 13 through verse 18. There, yeah, Matthew 16, verse 13, we say, Amen. Amen. Need me to wait, just holler, wait. Man, and it reads when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, uh -huh. he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Right. And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, uh -huh. Psalm Elias. Yeah. Others, Jeremiah's, are one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter, the one time he spoke quick and right, answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Thank you for honoring the word of God, whether you stand or sit. We can take a few moments of your time this morning and want to talk about where I find me. Where I find me. We always series. Anything we don't understand, we abuse. Uh -huh. yeah. Try to draw their identity from feelings 
This is why many relationships crush us because we go to a person hoping that person will make us feel like somebody. But then when that relationship is sour and that person begins to speak against you or to verbally abuse you, many people begin to believe what that other person is saying. Emotions are dangerous when it comes to trying to find our our identity and how we feel. I told you, and, and I mean it when I say I feel like running folks off the road sometimes. That's how angry I get with some people. But I am not that person. I don't act on how I feel because I know who I am. Today, I want to stop and identify where we do find our identity, no matter how we feel. The Oxford definition of identity is the fact of being who or what or what a person or thing is. The fact of being who or what a person or thing is, it's the fact, not the opinion. Who you really are. Uh -huh. And since that is the Oxford definition of identity, let me give you this, that nobody or nothing can define what they did not make. You can't tell me who I am just because you know my past. I don't care how you feel about me. I'm not what you say I am. I am who my maker says I am. Many people of us don't believe that because of how we feel. But you are not who the world says you are. You're not who Satan says you are. You're not who relationships say you are. You're not who even your emotions say you are. Nobody or nothing can define what they did not make. In the text, Simon is not searching for his identity. But he ends up finding it. How does he find it? Does he stumble upon this discovery? No, he does not. But there is a progression of steps that leads to Simon finding his identity. The first step is in identifying our Savior. Uh -huh. We're going to find out why. That is the first step to finding out who we are. Uh -huh. Identifying our Savior. Yeah. Jesus asked the disciples and it's, it's, it's almost like he's setting them up to give him a natural answer. He says, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Son of Man is a title given to Messiah, but it's understood in the simplest form is that I'm just a man. Yeah. Yeah. So he asked, who do people say uh -huh. that I am? Yeah. Yeah. They began to rattle off what some people have said about Jesus. Some we saw in Bible study that Herod said that he's John the Baptist. Uh -huh. But he had a motive for saying that Jesus must be John the Baptist. Because he was guilty. He felt the weight of his guilt for killing a just man for a lustful and foolish reason. Some people say that you're Elijah. Some say that you're Jeremiah. Some say that you're one of the prophets. And here is the problem with those answers. Men will say anything except the truth when they don't want to accept the truth. All right. You got to know who Jesus is. Yeah. You got to accept who he is, the truth about him. But if you will not accept who he really is, you'll say he's a good man. Yeah. Islam says that he's a prophet. He's a, he, is a, he is a type of Messiah. But then they give glory to Muhammad. But, 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 but they will give him credit for being a good man. But it's not enough that Jesus be a good man. 
Because if he's just, just another good man, there have been many what we think are good men who have died, but their death has no significance on my soul. Teaching a class called elemental theology it might sound like a big word, but it's just the principles, the basics of what we what we believe. And, and, and in my class this past week, we were talking about how God has revealed himself to man, but man has suppressed that truth. And in Romans chapter 1, 19 through 22, I want to read this. He said, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, in man, in every man. For God has showed it unto them, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain, here it is, in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. So in other words, because of what they wanted in particular for themselves, they could not receive who God really is. Because of what the religious wanted for themselves, they could not receive who Jesus really is. Because they wanted him to come and sit at their feet and learn in their school, they couldn't accept him for who he really is. Because he had no place to lay his head, because he said foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. They couldn't get with that image of a Messiah. Because he was walking and not riding on a, a camel or a donkey or a horse, he didn't look like the king that they wanted it is only until he rode upon the fall of a donkey that they began to throw their coats in the streets and palm branches and scream out Hosanna he's come he's with us save us they thought that that looks like a king but because he's he is praise God he doesn't look like a king he doesn't look like a messiah he doesn't look like a religious leader with the type of attire that they had all oh, they rejected his true identity in order for Simon to say what he said about Jesus, he had to agree with scripture. He had to put off anything that, that had any selfish intent. In it. He had to agree with scripture. He had to first believe of the many prophecies that he's born of a virgin and he's God with us. For Isaiah 7 and 14 says, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. He had to believe in order to make this confession that Jesus is God himself. For Isaiah 9 and 6 says, for unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given. And the government shall be on his shoulder and he shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Peter is not just making some simple statement when he says thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He's got to agree with what scripture has already said about our Savior. He has to agree that he's born in Bethlehem to rule Israel. For Micah 5 and 2 says, but thou Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me that is to be the ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from old, from everlasting. He has to believe that he will be crucified. For David says in Psalm 22, 15 through 18, my strength is not sure. My tongue and thou have me into the dust of death, for dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. He has to accept what scripture has already said about the Messiah. Peter is not making a simple confession. And that's just a handful of scriptures. The many scriptures that tell us who Jesus is. Peter has to know that he knows that he knows. 
because you don't make this confession about a man who is not who scripture says he's supposed to be. Because if Peter mistakenly puts the title of Christ, the son of the living God, on the wrong person, he's blaspheming. Peter makes this faith confession that he believes what scripture says about the man standing in front of him. So you must identify the Savior. Secondly, he must be revealed by the Father. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. That says a lot. Jesus is saying the only way you can know this is that God, the Father, has revealed this to you. Matthew 11, 25 through 30. Jesus lets us know that he is only revealed to those God has chosen. Matthew 11, 25 through 30. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee. O oh, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father Save the Son. And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. That's when he makes the beautiful beckoning call. Come unto me. All you that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Part of me discovering my identity comes from the fact that God has chosen to reveal the Savior to me. If you are not foreordained, if you are not predestined, God will not reveal himself to you. You cannot receive Jesus as Lord and Savior except the Father open up the door of your heart to receive him. I know you've got freedom of choice, but at the same time, God's will rules. His will prevails. He knows, he knew you from birth. Doesn't matter how messed up your life has looked, he knew you from birth, and he knew at what point in your life he would reveal himself to you. You can't receive Jesus except by faith and except God has revealed him to you. Amen. You must identify the Savior. The Savior must be revealed by the Father. Uh -huh. Lastly, you find yourself because of your Savior. I find myself, this is where I find me. I find myself because of my Savior. Listen to what Jesus said. After Simon said, you the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus says that flesh and blood couldn't reveal this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. Notice that in verse 17, Jesus calls him by his birth name. And Jesus connects him to his birth father because he calls him Simon bar Jonah, which means Simon, the son of Jonah. But then he says, I say unto you, you Peter. <laughs> oh, y'all don't hear that this morning. <laughs> Before you make.
made is confession of faith. Before the Father revealed my identity to you, you were just Simon, the son of Jonah. But because you know me now, I'm giving you a new identity. Which means if you know who Jesus is, if you knew that he's born of a virgin, born to rule, he's God in the flesh, God himself, he was crucified, then you must accept why he came. He doesn't just wear a title, but Jesus came to earth for a reason. Can I tell you why he came? He came because of you and I. He came because of you and I. If you're listening to me, if you're able to hear my voice, even if you have to read it through closed captioning, he came for you and I. Can I show that to you in scripture? Isaiah chapter 53. 4, 3, 10, surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes, we are healed. God Almighty. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord have laid upon him the iniquity of us all. All of us have a testimony. All of us have sins that we can admit to. All of us have sinned and stolen short of the glory of God. It doesn't matter if your sin looks like my sin or not. He's laid our sin on Jesus Christ. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. He made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord. Yet it pleased the Lord. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Amen. To know Jesus is to know who he is, but it's also to know why he came. And many people reject their true identity because of what they have done in their life. But if Jesus is your savior, whatever you have done, he has nailed it to the cross. And now you have an identity because he died for you. He rose from the dead for you. He died for you. He rose from the dead for you. I find myself because of my Savior. I'm not what I've done. I'm not how I feel. I'm who he says I am. See, see, see. In Jesus, you are loved. For God so loved the world, the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that whosoever, that whosoever shall believe upon him should not perish, but have ever 
everlasting life. You are loved. Faith in Jesus, you are saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. In Jesus, you are delivered. In Jesus, you are redeemed. You've been purchased in his blood. Bought with the price of his life. In Jesus, you are useful. In Jesus, you are a part of him. That's why he calls us the body of Christ. See, Simon, he had a decent name. At first, his name means to hear or to be heard. But Jesus gave him a new identity by faith. He says, I'm telling you right now, you're Peter, which means hewn from a rock or a piece of a rock. He's not the rock that the church has built up on, but he's birthed from that rock. You don't think about rocks giving birth to other rocks, but Jesus is a living rock. Jesus is a living rock. He, he, Peter calls him a lively rock. He calls us living stone. You got to go to 1 Peter to find that. But he's a rock that gives birth to rocks. In Jesus, we're born again. Detached, separated from our old identity. Said it last week. That old man, yeah. Those feelings are confined to the flesh. But I'm not him. I'm dead to him. Romans 6, because I died to him. I was made alive to marry Jesus. In Jesus, I have a new identity. In Jesus is where I find me. So I no longer have to look for people to give me identity. I don't need friends to tell me who I am. I don't need a partner in life, a soulmate, to tell me who I am. I don't need my parents to tell me who I am. I don't need my siblings, my children, my grandchildren to tell me who I am. Nobody completes me but Jesus. That's where I find me. Maybe here, struggling with your identity. Knowing that you're living in sin. And you need a new identity. You want to be saved. You believe this word that Jesus will make you new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. His grace is more powerful than your sin. <laughs> you can make him your savior today. You ask the question, how? Romans 10, 9 and 10. If thou wilt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart. God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. Paul explains with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Make that confession today. Make him your own. Maybe here, Spirit has pricked your heart because of the word this morning. You may be saved, maybe online, you may be saved, but you're struggling with your identity.
because of how the devil keeps trying to accuse you. He's called the accuser of the brethren. That's actually the only weapon he has against us. Yeah. To accuse you. To make you feel like you're still lost. To make you feel like there's no hope for you. He wants you to back away from the faith. But in the same scripture in Revelation. That the scripture calls him the accuser of the brethren. It says that he's cast down. And it says that we are overcome by the blood of the lamb. And the word of our testimony. They need prayer because you feel like you've fallen away. I want to pray for you. Maybe here in the Holy Spirit has pricked your heart to join with this ministry. First thing we want is for you to be saved. To be a part of the body of Christ. But our arms are always open to welcome you into our ministry. I promise we got a spot for you. Amen. Amen. There are ministries that we don't have that God may have birthed in you. There are things that we have not done that God may have given to you to help this ministry glorify our Father. You may be here and you just need prayer this morning. I invite you to lift your hands. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Most holy and righteous God, Lord, we thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that I don't have to hold on to my past. Because you freed us. You freed me. Thank you, God, that I don't have to live in shame. Because you covered my shame in the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that I'm not how I feel because you crucified my flesh at Calvary. Help us, God, to embrace our new identity. That only and only because of Jesus. Help us to receive it. Help us to believe it, God. The just shall live by faith. Because of faith, we're justified. Because of grace, we're saved. Father, where the enemy is trying to not whisper, but scream in the ear of someone who believes. Father, we rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Let them hear your voice. Let them hear your promises. Let them hear the truth. That in the flesh we are who we are because of Adam. But in Christ we're new because of Jesus. Father, there may be someone listening and they're not saved. Lord God, they feel the weight of their sin right now. And they're screaming out for a new identity. Lord, give them the assurance of what you said in your word. John 3.16 came out of the mouth of Jesus himself that you love even them so much that you gave your only begotten son and that whosoever includes everyone draw them in God that they might be saved Father, there are those right now who have lifted their hands in prayer. Someone online says pray. Someone who didn't acknowledge they need prayer, but Lord, you know what they need. You said your spirit makes intercession for us, even when we don't even know what to pray for. Lord, we lift each and every soul before you right now. Somebody needs hope, Lord God. Give him hope. Somebody needs a healing in their body, God. Father, please, Lord, by your divine virtue, them healing. 
somebody needs provision, you're able to supply, Lord. Open the door for them, God. Someone's praying about their job right now. Father, make a way for them, Lord. Set crooked paths straight, Lord. Somebody's struggling with depression right now. Lord, help them, Father. Somebody's struggling, Lord, because they really want to embrace this church thing. They really want to love you. They want to feel this thing. They want to be passionate. Lord, let a fire burn in their heart right now, God. Somebody needs you, Lord. Father, I'm not a prophet. I don't know what they need, but you do. And I know right now, even as I speak, that, Lord God, you're able to answer every prayer at the same time. I lift your people up before you, God. I lift up those who are unable to be with us right now, God. I lift up Pastor Miller and his family, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Those that are in the streets that are struggling, God, we lift them up before you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We know that you're able. And, Father, we pray for our evening service. We pray for Pastor Moss, for Hall Grove. Pray for the fellowship, Lord God. I pray that we'll all learn, Lord Father, from the fellowship and from the word today. And then, God, we pray for the food that is to be prepared and to be served. We pray that you would bless it all, bless those who are prepared, that everything might bring nourishment and not harm. For, Lord, you said that whatever you sanctify, let no man call unclean. Sanctify all the food, the beverages, that it might bring nourishment to our bodies. Bless those who have prepared the meal, Lord. Supply them with strength, Lord. Father, while we're in the kitchen, we pray for Sister Sandra, Lord, that you would supply everything that she needs in the name of Jesus. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide on each one of us from this time and forevermore. Let us all 